As we know, it has been fundamentally changed by coronavirus. Virtual classrooms became the norm. But being able to take classes online is a luxury some Borderland students just don't have. ABC 7's Mauricio Casillas went to one of the most impoverished areas in Juarez to document the severity of the learning loss some children face. It's a story you'll see only on ABC 7. The difficulties of at-home learning are well documented in El Paso, but here, just a stone's throw away, in one of the poorest neighborhoods in Ciudad Juarez, there are many children who haven't had any sort of formal schooling for months. It's a daily struggle here. No tenemos drenaje, pues agua potable. We have a lot of needs, says Katia Lopez Luján. She says her neighborhood, a colonia named Felipe Ángeles Ampliación, has no sewage or drinking water. For perspective, the neighborhood is only a few miles west of UTEP. But life for thousands of residents on this side of the border is vastly different. Katia lives in this house with her 14-year-old son and 8-year-old daughter. This is where they shower, says Katia's daughter Saidi, pointing to a plastic bucket. It's been more than a year since Saidi's been in a classroom. Mis amigos. Seeing her friends is what she misses the most. At the start of the school year in August, Mexico announced all students would have to learn at home. Mexican government statistics show only 56% of households have access to the internet. Les damos la bienvenida a Aprende en Casa 3. As a result, the government started offering virtual lessons like this one on television. Yo no tengo tele. Katia explains that her TV is broken. Her family doesn't own a laptop. So her two children would have to share the one smartphone they own and take turns learning virtually. This is the living situation for the family. It's in this small room where Katia and her two children sleep. So that complicates things just in general from living in a tight space trying to learn something. But the family has spotty internet access and that means workbooks like this one, which were given at the beginning of the year, are left here collecting dust. Se acaban los datos, se quedan los niños a, a mitad de, de trabajos. Katia tells me she's had to choose between paying for extra cell data or feeding her children. Pero pues también comen. <laughs> It means Saidi and her brother spend most of their days just hanging out at home. We don't learn, she says. We just play or sometimes walk the dogs. Even at eight years old, Saidi realizes the importance of her education. She says she won't be able to do anything when she grows up unless she studies. Her dream is to be a veterinarian. Katia says she would prefer if her daughter could repeat third grade once her school reopens. There's nothing to gain by her going to fourth grade if she's not learning anything right now, she says. It's a reality that many families in this neighborhood are dealing with since the pandemic gripped the borderland. Ya no va a ser nada igual. Things won't be the same, Katya says. But she is thankful for one thing. Her family is healthy. And that's what keeps them going forward. Mauricio Casillas, ABC7. Some private schools in Mexico have already started to open, but Katya says she still doesn't know when the public school her children attend will reopen.